The ingredients are sauerkraut, preferably from Aldi's because they have this kind. Um, this, German, this German style, it doesn't need to be rinsed like some of the other sauerkrauts that, that come from in a can. Mushrooms. Onions. One large onion. Just one? Yeah, but if it's pre not preferable to taste, then add more. All right, and butter. Okay. So we're also going to be adding some olive oil so the butter doesn't burn. It's in the pan over there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. So first, we cut up the onions, just like dice them. Mm hmm. It takes me a while, sorry. No, don't worry about it. <laughs> Actually, actually I, I'm going to pause it for a minute. That's a good idea. All right, Mrs. Hoffman made me taste the sauerkraut because she says if it's too strong, you might want to rinse it, but I tasted this, and it's fine. She ha How much olive oil did you put in with the butter? I found a tablespoon. About a tablespoon, and that was a stick of butter. A stick of butter. <laughs> And you're just going to what? Saute them until Saute they're clear. The mm -hmm. And then we'll add the sauerkraut and just let that simmer while we're um, getting the noodles ready. And when the, when this is all simmered, then we add the uh, okay. mushrooms on top. And salt and pepper to taste. And garlic powder sometimes enhances it if you like garlic powder. If you don't, it's okay. You can play with it with whatever you uh, like. Okay. Um, Do you ever use garlic cloves? I have. Mm -hmm. Okay. Would you like me to put a couple in? Uh, it doesn't matter to me. Okay. Whatever. We're, do, we're making this the way you always make it. So if you don't always put it in, then don't. Okay. So... We just leave that option to other people. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. What did you just throw in? Some salt and pepper? I had a, a couple of things. Oh. Of, yeah, um, you mentioned the noodles, and so we didn't put those out as an ingredient, so I'll have to get some of those. Oh, yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. We use, she uses the spiral noodles. That's the rotini, which I'm trying to get this without a glare on it. These are tricolored, but they don't have to be. These just happen to be all that we could find at Aldi's, and, but they're fine, too. She said a pound of these, well these are actually 12 ounces, but a, a box of these to that for that amount of sauerkraut and onions. All right, uh, Mrs. Hoffman just said that uh, she doesn't think that's enough butter for that amount of um, sauerkraut. So she's adding another half a stick of butter and she's going to use the other half a stick later um, with the noodles. On top of the noodles. So it's going to be actually two sticks of butter instead of one, plus a couple tablespoons of olive oil. And she put the water on for the noodles over there. And I put salt in it. She put salt in the water so it'll boil faster come to a boil faster. You put a lid on it so it'll come to the boil faster. A lot of people don't understand that you, sh if you want something to boil, you need to put a lid on it. All right. Mm -hmm. And you know the onions are done when they're clear? Yeah, they're looking pretty clear. Are they to you? They look clear to me. Mm -hmm. Now we just add the sauerkraut. That's a well-packed jar. It is very. You do get your money's worth with this sauerkraut. It's wonderful. And all these should know how to make sauerkraut because they're German company. So, well, I shouldn't say make it, but they should know how to pick it. For the store.
if you don't have an Aldi's around like we do here, it's just going to have to experiment with sauerkraut until you get one that's good. They say that Aldi's taste as close to homemade as um, any other sauerkraut people have tried. Even the fresh ones in the... Um, But if you can't get the you, fresh is better than the can, because can seem to have a tinny taste. That's in a jar. That's why you like it, huh? Maybe I'm not sure. So we'll let that saute for about 10, 15 minutes. What heat? What heat do you have it on? I have it on pretty high now because that's a low flame back there. Okay. And that. Uh, but I'd say on a medium heat. Mm -hmm. Put the um, sauerkraut cool the pan right down. So. Okay, so she set the timer for about 15 minutes to saute this cook the cabbage up. You can really smell it. And she said you can use one can of mushrooms um, or two, whatever you prefer. I like mushrooms. For me, more mushrooms the better. Uh, some people don't like mushrooms at all. I don't know what they would do. Just do it out. Yeah. But the mushrooms really do make a difference. But I guess if you don't like mushrooms, it's not the difference you care about. She said they used to have to take the sauerkraut, rinse it off, boil it for 20 minutes, then rinse it again, and then start the process where with this with this sauerkraut, you don't. You could skip all the rinsing and boiling at the beginning. At first, I think you used to rinse it, didn't you? And then you stopped even doing that with this sauerkraut. Right. Mm hmm Because you were rinsing all the vitamins away that came with it, and I didn't realize that until I read. The back of the jar. Mm -hmm. Good to read. Salt. Pepper. You do it all with a fork. Would a spatula be better? It can be, yeah. Um, I started with that, but... You just like the fork. I just like the fork. Okay. And the reason we use these rotini noodles is because uh, the little... the way they're twisted like that, they hold the sauerkraut unlike macaroni or spaghetti or something, which wouldn't. It, 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 it falls into those little crevices around the noodles and just, and just meshes really well the flavors together. Nothing else works quite so well. Now, if you wanted to make regular pierogies, you'd still go through all this process for they make the cabbage filling, but you would, at the end, instead of using those noodles, you would make, you would put it in, in the pierogi, which is a whole lot of work in itself. 
Well, these are lazy. Tastes pillow the beads. same, but it's a lot. Yeah. It's an all day process. Right. I'm going to put the onions on. Remember when Father yeah. Pfeiffer had us make. How many, how many pierogies do we have to make? 300. Huh? 300 or more. Oh, it was, I think it was more than 400 we 400. ended up making for that pierogi uh, stand. For, it's a, it's a, yeah, it's a sale it's for the uh, fair, whatever it was. We, made we had sold out all the cabbage ones first. <laughs> potato ones took longer. We had potato ones left long afterwards, but we had no cabbage ones left. We were eating potato pierogies for months. <laughs> Quite some time. <laughs> but not the cabbage. We had people come up and order them ahead of time just to make sure they got their cabbage pierogies instead of... Because we... they're hard to find in uh -huh. a grocery store. You yeah. get frozen potato, but you don't get frozen cabbage. Oh, cabbage. Mm -hmm. A Polish meat market and we'll get the cabbage. Right. Now all we have to do is wait for the noodles, the noodles. to get done. Mm -hmm. And that's going to take a while because the water's not even boiling. Probably Maybe you want to switch the burners? For the water? Yeah. This is a bigger burner for the, for the water. All right, sure. We've moved the... The filling to a crock pot to keep hot while we're doing the noodles. And Mrs. Hoffman's method of doing the noodles, because I need I'll never remember this, is bring it once it boils, she put the noodles in, and then she brings it back to a boil, turns the turns the fire off and puts leaves the lid on it. That way it continues to cook, but without the fire and saves energy. This was Um, something she learned back in the 70s when there was the energy crisis. None of you remember that. We do. <laughs> remember, the, remember the long lines at the gas station? Oh, well, anyway. Uh, so it'll continue to cook. And she has the timer set for how many minutes? Seven. Seven minutes. Because so. once we put it in the crock pot, to keep it warm, it'll still cook um, a little more too, yeah. also. Now it's ready to eat when it comes, once you mix, mix the two together, you don't really have to leave it in the crock pot, do you? you it's ready to eat at that point, right? It's ready to eat. Mm -hmm. But because lunch isn't going to be for another two hours. Um, but it's really better good. even the following day, it's like a spaghetti sauce. The more it sits around, the more all uh, the, the flavors melt. melt together. Okay. They're pretty before you put stuff on them. Once you put the sauerkraut on them, you can't even tell the colors. No. I'm going to put it back in here just till I melt the butter on it. And I probably don't need to do that, but that way I know it's uniform. True. One recipe that I had called for a pound of butter in this dish. Wow. We found that. Two sticks was sufficient. And then if you needed more, you could always add some before you eat it. But a pound of butter is very caloric. Yeah. And then we just mix this all together, and there you go. You have your delicious meal of lazy pierogi.
if you need more salt or pepper or garlic flavor or anything, you can just add it. melted pretty instantly. Seems pretty much all mixed up. Looks good. And it's ready to go, but to eat, but let's just say the longer it sits, the better the it, better it is. is. It is. So excellent. Mm -hmm. Okay.